Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Tactical Tuesday. Tonight's topic is going to be dun, da, da, dun, alternative modes of transportation, and not just for emergencies, but we will talk about that as well. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be just uh, me and Uncle Al tonight. Froze, and I froze. Yeah, I froze. Look what's look what, look what's around us, Al. Look, I'm I know. Like, we're cold. <laughs> yeah, we're cold. It's 104 where I'm at. Uh, Even the birds are walking on the grass, going. <laughs> so. And Courtney just came in. Yep, Courtney's in here. Carol's in here. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, Dave's not going to be with us. His uh, Dave still bothering. Yeah, his neck still bothering. He is in a side chat, and I hope he's uh, taking it easy. Uh, Using rest some muscle, Dave, rest. Rest muscle, Dave. muscle relaxants. Yep. Especially if you can get valerian root. That's a uh, natural herbal one. Big Farm hates it. Yep. Big time. <laughs> All righty. So let's see who else. Oh, man. It says up to 44 comments. So let me jump over here. Scroll back down. I know everybody's talking to each other. Right. All right. So Ryan the Gamer uh, was in. And he tells everybody, uh, don't forget to smash the like button. Courtney has Courtney Sussman came in, then Al came in, uh, Butch from Sand Hollow Homestead, Backwoods Law, and I keep on forgetting his first name. And then uh, Texas Rob came in, yep, and then Dave, Southern Ohio Prepping, Shady Hill Homestead. You did get Butch, right. Yeah, I did Butch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Butch is uh, Sand, Ho Sand Hollow Homestead. And Ginger Ninja's in here. Ryan the Gamer came back in again. D -d 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 -d. Uh, Carol Fishes and Loves Life. Uh, and we're getting down here. Kaylin Strain's in the house. Yep. And getting down here, and it looks like I'm caught up with everybody. That, that's a yeah, yeah, Carol. Yeah, when I had when I had my uh, problems when I was going to the chiropractor, and I had I have three bulging discs, two protruding, and one is flip flopping. And when they were acting up, I mean, it was you know my wife had to help me up out into the car and drive me to the chiropractor. But that stuff there really helped out. Got oh, all the muscles. Folks. All the relax and everything. Right. Get if you're going to take it in pill form, the gelatin capsules is less that yeah. less irritating. Sorry. Yeah. All righty. So, all right. So we're going to be talking about ways to travel. As you see, I'm up in the in the shield helicarrier, so I'm traveling above everybody right now. Got got the uh, got the Nick Nick Fury on my shoulder here. <laughs> I'm just in my den. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. Let's. I guess we'll just jump right into it here, and we'll start off by changing something up here and reminding everybody, please share this, share it out. You know, I have a. I actually broke a hundred subscribers on the on the channel on the old channel I revived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh all right. gosh. All right. So, basic question is, I mean, there's two questions. One, how will you get around not in a major emergency, but if gas prices just get too high? All right. There's there's a lot of things to think about. Or in an emergency, if we have an EMP or if we have um 
massive fires, whatever, you know, something, you know, big catastrophe where the roads are earthquakes where the roads aren't going to be totally functioning all the time and stuff. Or you or, feel like in Canada, like Page Family Homestead, they couldn't drive their car because there was a lockdown on the cars. So they got a rhino and drove around town. <laughs> yeah. It's not an automobile. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Let's see, make sure I'm not missing anybody in the side chat before I go on. All right, so the probably the number one way people get around, unless they have to go across town, like for um, uh, Steve in L.A., it's, you know, you know, most people can walk someplace, you know, to get some sort of groceries, to do something, they can walk. How many people have good walking shoes? That's another live stream we did about nine months ago. Was yeah. on walk. Was on shoes. All right. And socks. Don't forget the other component: socks. Don't socks. go barefoot. Oh yeah. We have Speaking to say that all the time because people with, with or boots without socks end up with what? <laughs> no, not that. The other thing: blisters. Blisters. Yeah. My my uh, my second to youngest grandson, Daniel. He everyone else throws their sh was throwing their shoes and socks off as soon as they got back in the house. All of a sudden, about six months ago, uh, uh he wants those shoes on twenty four seven. He crawls into bed with shoes on, no socks. His tennis shoes, his um, um, lightning McQueen. Came in. Light Lightning McQueen tennis shoes, and you know, problem is when I take them off over here because I make them walk around barefoot inside the house over here. It's like, whoa, man! So, when you're talking about shoes and walking, and you haven't been walking a lot, you're going to need good socks, moleskin, and either Gold Bond or one of the other top powders you put in your shoes to prevent chapping. Yep. Now, the next most popular way. The bicycle. I'm just going to be biking along. Now, there has been so much change in the last three years on bicycles. I mean, it's been amazing. Look at. Oh, is this? Stop the other track. Oh, okay. I'm just, I just caught what the Backwoods Law was uh, talking about there. The uh, the things have changed so much in the last couple of years in bicycles with carbon fiber bikes becoming more popular and the prices coming down and all the different things in them and some of the things that they're doing. And one of the things I've noticed that has become more popular, hey, Gardner Josh, is foldables. Col collapsible bikes, foldables, yep. and not just foldables. Take a good look at this, people. I know it's it's a, it's a um, it's a gift, so it's running back and forth. But you see that big black thing there in, above the black, the back wheel and in between the seat thing? That's a battery pack. It has a little electric motor on it that is a pedal assist. So yeah, there's a lot of these out there uh, that are coming that are electric and stuff. And uh, Ryan says, don't forget to wear your helmet. Yeah. Now Al. You have something like this, don't you? Yeah, but it's not, not electric. It's and not I electric. Carry it, I could carry it on the bus. And I told my friend we did a 10-mile hike. I'm taking the bus because it's 100, 101 or 102 outside. Okay, but he wanted to play Rambo, took a backpack, and he walked. I took the bus, got off the bus, and biked the rest of the way. I took the bus for five miles. That's until the edge of town. Then took... The, on the road, the bicycle and bike five miles. It took him two hours. It took me about maybe less than an hour, about 45 minutes, because I have to bike. Yeah. And by the time he got there, he's sweating. And he says, yeah, I just hiked 10 miles. I told him, I took the bus and I got my bike out <laughs> and drove over here with the same pack. Yeah. And he, he couldn't believe it. Like I said, yeah. smarter folks. Yeah. Don't kill yourself when you're out there. Now, uh, the thing is that I've seen a lot more of, are, you know, before it used to be just Schwinn. It had right. a little trike with a little basket on the back. 
there's all sorts of uh, these adult trikes out there with 10, you know, put 10, 15 speed gears on them, you know, you know, low, some have some really low gears yep. and stuff. And, you know, my daughter was looking in here, looking at this while I was putting this together. And she was like, I can put two of the boys in back. I go, yeah, we can build a little trailer behind it with another bench seat. And you can put the other two boys in there. You have all four boys in there. You can bike around town. Right. And these systems are based off of the old, uh, in the Far East, the rickshaws. Mm -hmm. There used to be hand pull. Well, yeah. that that was gone. But nowadays, everybody's on electric or had pedal. Depends how much money you want to spend on the trike. Yeah. And actually, some of those ones over, like some of the pictures said, I didn't bring them up to do them, but they actually have uh, two and three bench seats on some of those ones over there for those little uh, rickshaw taxis. All right. Now, this is the one that has me drooling. It's a battery assist, you know, electric assist. So you can just pedal and not use it at all. Or you can uh, use the, elect the electric uh, uh, motor to assist you. Or you can go all electric if you're too tired. But uh, Froze. Yeah. Okay. It's got the big fat tires for going off road. It's got disc brakes all around. So, yeah, this is uh, you know, a little uh, basket in the back for if I go down to the Grow store you know, a little bit close here. I can get folks, a little... do wear a helmet. These things pick up speed up to 35 miles an hour. Yeah. And it's not like a car. If you crash in one of those, you're going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've been looking, looking at one of these, and it's like, oh, that would be great for pedaling around town here. All right, and that's just, just to do it so I don't have to take the truck around. Now, a lot of people uh, are getting, you know, have the golf carts and stuff. And if you go watch Gemini Homestead, uh, Miss Lippy has a golf cart. <laughs> and she's out there. She's got it stuck a couple times. But um, the problem with the golf carts, whether the, the, the ones that actually look like golf course carts or one of these ones that look like something else, is that, what do they run on? Electricity only. So you got to make sure you keep them charged. Right. And yeah. remember, folks, you have to have a, a plate and a little rectangle on unless you go off-roading. Yeah. Uh, rectangle, if you use it on public street, it's an extra slow vehicle. You yeah. cannot do 55 in a 55 lane. No yeah. way those things could go that fast. Yeah. All right. Now the uh, the next option up is one that has it has the gas motor in it, and you know you got the Hondas, the Polaris, all the uh, the other ATVs or UTVs. You want to get the really fancy, expensive ones that have the diesel motors in them, and all oh, all the fun things. Did I see Bob? No, I did not. See. Yeah, I yeah. did. Bob's, Bob's here. Bob's here. Yep. here. And Tasha uh, Prep for it's here. Yep. And who else slipped in here? Uh, you I, did get uh, Josh, right? Yeah, Gardner Josh. All right, so yeah, there was these is, you know, around here. I'm surprised some families around there have two or three of these things. Not necessarily four seaters; they can be two seaters, like uh, this one. But they, you know, just about everybody has. You know, around here, a lot of the families have two or three of these, and then they have the little mini ones. That the kids under 12 are driving around. But again, folks, those are for suburban streets or back road streets. Do not yeah. take it on a highway. No. We had one idiot who did this and uh, on 195 and created a two mile because he's doing uh, whatever top speed this is. And everybody's behind him honking their horn, waiting for the highway patrol to get there and get this kook off the road. Yeah. It's a 55 mile an hour highway. Yeah. Hey, WD. So Hi, got WD. WD. Got WD Glock and Roll in here. And um, yeah, so, but right now, you know, because these are so fuel efficient over cars and stuff, um, people driving around town here, even across the railroad tracks into uh, Firth, are driving these things around because they're fuel efficient. And by the time their AC cools the car down, and one of these things, they're already there, and they got the wind blowing their hair, and all nice and cool and stuff. So that's what a lot of them do. 
Yeah, and if the road's blocked, just drive over and on the sidewalk into somebody's lawn, and that you're back home. Yeah, but uh, so just don't um, do it, folks. <laughs> and still, there are a few people around here that do put the the snow blade on them, but uh, they only put them on the big, heavy duty honking ones. They've learned on the little on the on the, the lighter ones like this around here. You don't put a snow blade on it. No. All right. The next thing here. Oh, the old three wheelers. Yep. ATV. Everybody, everybody remembers the old ATV uh, Hondas. Of course, this Honda here is is one of the stretched ones. The original ones were a lot shorter. In fact, they were so much shorter that when it, the ones when they first came out, the original ones. If you hit one of those little um, cement things in the parking lot, you go up and bump it. Yeah, I you know. Flip, flip over. And what was so funny is that um, the first year they came out, do you know where they made their big splash? In a James Bond movie, Diamonds Are Forever. Yep. And the reason I know that is because I've talked about my grandfather owning the rental equipment catering company for the motion picture studios. Uh, we had them all down there before they went on the movie set. And we were riding the heck out of them before they went up to the movie set. And we got, when they came back, what was left of them, we rode the heck out of them. Bob, you could drive, uh, if you have a license and you have the triangle on it, you could drive it to the market. You just can't drive it on. Yeah, uh, it depends on the state, too. Some right. states you got to get, you got to get, uh, you have to get an on road license for it. And you can only go to go on certain roads. Same thing with the golf carts. Other states, you don't need a license to drive on the road. Um, it's a uh, really, you know, you got to look into what your local laws are. For yeah, for California, it's a big no no for golf carts, rhinos, and ATV. If you're on a highway or any street designated at 55 that's a big actually no -no. actually anything over 35 right because i you know because you know, when i was a deputy sheriff we used to have to go go over over to lafayette where uh the um big retirement center is and go over there quite often stay off the main you know, this road not this road this one's 35 <laughs> 45 we give you tickets over here and they're just looking huh yeah Okay, and they're getting fancy on it now. All right, here's the question. Al, don't give them the answer. I won't. What is this originally? Guys, look here. I'm going to make it full size so you can look at it. What was this originally? I almost I almost started humming the, uh, the Jeopardy song. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's copyrighted. Yeah. Can anybody guess what this was? Nope. Close. You're close, but it was not a jet ski. Dave got it. Uh, yeah, Dave got it. And then, uh, yeah, it was a snowmobile. Yep. And what they did was, now I've shown before on one of the other ones where they took the front wheels off. I mean, it's the skis off and they just had the bracket to put the, the wheels on it. And they kept the... Um, the snowmobile belt on it. They just put a, a, a heavy duty dirt belt on there. This one they just took off the belt and put a, put a tire on it. And this yep. is becoming very popular as a uh, summer changeover for the snowmobiles. Right. It's totally, it's, hey, how to garden? How to garden? Just, how you? Yeah, they just change it over from uh, you know some oh, summer times here. Let's uh, pull off the. Uh, the uh, the the skis for the front and put wheels on it. Put the wheel on the back and boom. Right, but you got to be careful, folks. These are treated same as ATVs, and they also have a I forget um, braking problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, if, if you don't get the get the kit that has it puts the uh, the big disc brakes on. And I'm looking at this one here. Nope, that's not a disc brake in the back on that. No. Um, but I don't see disc brakes. Oh yeah, it's got disc brakes on the front. I can't. I do see disc brakes over there on the front on that uh, far wheel there. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's one of those things that is becoming a you know a good thing for a multi, multi like uh, Fisher says a multi tool. So now, 
believe it or not, this was a World War II design that is making a big comeback. Now, I'm not sure if there's any motorcycle enthusiasts out there. But if there are, they will know when I say what this is. Butch, they don't have it. No. Chinese didn't copy it. That's the same manufacturer, I think, that may develop this in World War II. Yeah. This is Motor Guzzi. Motor Guzzi. And this, they are, they are selling these right now. This is called the Mule, and it's a, a it's an off road, uh, not 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 a dirt bike. It's an off road work vehicle, right? And it's for uh, mud, snow, everything. Right. It it replaces the Mule, and I can't remember if they had an automated version of this. I don't know. They yeah, Bob, Bob picked it up as an Italy. Yep. Yep. All righty. And let's see what else we got here. Okay. Now, we're now if we happen to have a electromagnetic pulse or whatever you Hi, want to call it, or things get, hey, mouse, everything gets so bad that, you know, you can't drive your car. There's the old school way of getting around. I'm going to blow through some of these kind of quick here because horses, yes. And they, you know, a lot of people now are still are bring, doing horse stuff with rubber tired and suspensions under the wagons. And the horses, thank you. <laughs> yes. But uh, uh, I miss the days when I used to do this. But yeah, uh, horses are a great all terrain vehicle, but they are expensive. Right, and there are difficulties with it, folks, because a lot of people have this the cowboy image. Okay, that's fine as a fantasy reality. Both me, me and Gil knows about it. You have to feed them. You have to water them. You have to yeah. get a shovel. And they don't use a toilet, so you have to have a flat end shovel, and you'll be out there with a wheelbarrow, which is another vehicle we didn't talk yeah. about. However. One of the things I do like about horses over cows, cows poop wherever they are. Horses will go. Elsa uh, crows. Yep. Crows. Horses will go to one spot in the corral or two, they'll have a, two or three spots. All right. And that's where they poop. They go to their to poop. And because they don't want to roll it when they're rolling the dust, they don't want to be rolling their poop when they're rolling the dust to get the, uh, the bugs and stuff off. No, cows don't care. Yeah. Cows walk and poop at the same time. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I have to tell everybody, go watch the Miracle Workers, the Oregon Trails. This is why people wrote or developed the steam engine and the bicycle because yeah. of the poop. Yeah. Lots and lots of poop. Poop. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right, Mouse. Uh, you got to worry about their hooves too. My yep. I grew up. My dad. Well, I, actually, when my dad met my mom, he had just finished his last rodeo in the top 10 all around cowboy met my mom and left the rodeo and 12 months later i was born but uh I was they, it, farm it, there. It, yeah so um but my dad was also a farrier too yeah so he taught my older sister, my older brother, and me. My younger brother was too little to learn how to uh, shoe horses. Um, now, th this this is in, this is going to be interesting for some of you. This is down in at Philmont Scout Ranch, where the youth of today are learning how to care for horses and go on what's called cavalcade. For ten days, they're there. They go out and uh, they, the first two days is orientation. They then uh, load their gear up on the horses. They go out and they camp, ride, camp, ride, camp, ride. And then they come back and the last day they're taking care of the horses, getting everything cleaned up and everything before they leave. Hi, Christy Bits. Hey, Christy. And so, um, yeah, pack horses. Um, is a way to move things around. And I'm trying to remember which there was one of those reality shows. 
I forget where it was, but the guy when he went into town didn't have a snowblower or anything else. He had a couple pack horses, and he rode into town to get his uh, gear and stuff, and then back out to his cabin. Yep. But, yeah. I so, think that was on National Geographic. Yeah. Uh, so, Mountain Man. Yeah. And here, here's another. This, this is another shot of cavalcade. Those are all scouts, vent, venture scouts, ventures is co-ed, and right. so that's twenty to twenty-one. And yes, they. Uh, they make them wear bicycle helmets. The ones wearing cowboy hats are the ones that actually work there. They have more experience and they know what happens if they fall off. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, mules pack a lot of uh, stuff around. Even to right. this day, in some of the back areas, they use a lot of mules to move stuff around. So the question is, what's in your future? Disaster or not, emergency or not? What is in your future for transportation? And so I'm going to bring us back to this. And, and I'm going to cover the things we miss. All right, go ahead, Al. Okay, number one thing you never see in a disaster movie or sci-fi movie that everybody complains about. I only see once in Lost in Space, the new hip version, is a wheelbarrow. They had the little garden uh, thing in Lost in Space. No, you need a wheelbarrow. Trust me. If you have to move, remove poop from a horse stable, you want a wheelbarrow. You do not want to tug at a garden cart. You know, horses poop a lot of folks. I mean, knee deep sometimes, and you're there with a shovel all day. Right, Gil? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. Let me throw this up here for you. You got all sorts of different types. And also on the bigger ones, you could put in a water bag. They have a water bag for that type too. Yeah. We're talking about old like And I will I will tell you the um the double wheel ones, especially when you got like the uh, six or eight cubic foot barrels on there. Yep. And you're full of concrete, you want you want that double wheel, not that single one, trying to balance a push at the same time. Right. Yeah, so uh, like I said, if uh, Gil uh, wants to punch in, they do have a water bag or to fit on the double wheel one or the single wheel one. I recommend the double wheel. It's a lot easier on your back, folks. Water. Especially if you have to haul, haul uh, water or manure or anything. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some of them right there. See how easy yeah. that is? Yeah. You just tip it and it goes into this, this, the bucket. One's this, one, this one's real easy compared to uh this one you look at her arms you can see her struggling to you know keep it up and balanced and he's just kind of like ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> like i said you but, can water your plants and trees like this fill up yep. the bladder put it, it's already in the wheelbarrow that's all you have to do see how easy that is and if you have to evacuate and you need to carry a lot of water Ta-da! They never yep. show you this on science fiction movies. Yeah, and they never talk about it in any of, in any of the um, novels either. Right. Yeah, everybody, everybody has their uh, um, Mac know, and Max mobile. Mad, Mad Max mobile. Yeah, you know, you know, evacuation four by four with the you know, the six right, extra fuel. Six extra fuel tanks on it. Yeah, and, and the machine gun control. on top. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, they don't, you know, they don't, you know, they're still trying to be cool, but they, you know, they keep their, they, they, instead of getting the lift kit, they get the extra fuel tanks and talk about all the stuff on it. But yeah, but this See, is actually simple, simple and common sense. Yeah. And you can see, you know, if you like, basically wheelbarrows, water bladder, and every, every now and then every line, every, these lines saying how much these things cost. Walmart, $39 for a 21-gallon water bladder. So next time when you're lugging 29 gallons of water, think about this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, they've the actually made a, made a solid one to go on the wheelbarrow frame. Yep. I would get the two-wheeler. The one-wheeler is a... It's they so hard. Over. Yeah. Especially when they get three quarters full or you take a quarter of the water out, they slosh side to side. 
Try going downhill <laughs> with one of these things. Uh, Mouse says she ain't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had our last. Anybody else have any ideas? I got a couple more. I don't want to take up time. So go, go ahead. We got we got a half hour to go. Okay. What's do every homeless person moves in America? And that's the most things you're going to see after a SHTF happens. And Katrina, they had how many shopping carts they found all over uh, um, New yeah. Orleans after that? They had all these things all over the place. Yeah. And what's interesting is, um, let's see if I, I'm going to go ahead and click on this because this one here just does come up nice. I was actually using one of these uh, to haul stuff in from the parking lot into uh, work uh, when I was hauling, you know, supplies and stuff in. And these things here, they fold up flat, toss it in your trunk, and then you can load it up with all, you know, groceries and everything else. I have one because I'm disabled, and it's yeah. a lot easier than dragging uh, carts around. Yeah, there's a. Uh, now, this one is uh, a little bit heavier duty. And you it, can't it, get the, it folds up too, but it's right. a little harder. You get the, the ones with the special wheels on it. These are off the road types. You don't see it yeah. on this because it's custom. You pop these off and you put those on and yeah. <laughs> you laugh. I think they have one. Yeah, that's kind of looking like that. Yeah, but uh, yes. Some of the some of the and you get the ones with the bigger bigger wheels on there. Bigger, remember, bigger is better for stronger. the wheels. Not only stronger, but when you hit a little rock, a little wheel hits that rock and it stops. The bigger one goes over it. Right. Instead of rock, I should say pebble. It kind of looks like Dave's one. Doesn't Dave have a foldable cart like that? I thought he did. Yeah. I'm not sure if Dave's still in here or not. No. And don't forget, they also have the 300-pound or 500-pound deer cart. I yeah. think it was the middle part. And if you're hunting game, whoops, past it, down bit. It's a two-wheeler. I see there we the four-wheel four one. Yeah, and right this below one here. it. There we go. Yeah, the big, that one there. Those are great if you have to haul things like feed. You haul feed over a two-acre area, you want that. They'll hold yeah. up to 500 pounds. Yeah. What's the other thing uh, you were wanted to talk about? Oh, uh, uh, what's it called? Skateboards and scooters. Uh, scooters. Yes, I forgot about scooters. I can't believe it. My nephew's are like, what the hell is that? It's an electric scooter, Uncle Al. All you have to do is either sit on it or ride it without the seat. Yeah. It's like Uncle Alan's in the Stone Age. I thought it was the, right. like the little yellow one. You sit on it. It's a Vespa yeah. and you drive around. Well, you got that one there. But then there is this foldable one here. I'm going to open up a new window for it. There it goes. And uh, this one's not showing it with a uh, seat fold seat. up on it. Some some have a seat that fold up on There it is. There's the seat that folds up on it. Yeah, 3000 bucks. It went down from three thousand bucks. It's it went down from th went, went down from th uh, thirty five hundred down to twenty nine hundred. Right, but, uh, but, but you could buy them used too at either yeah. reduced rates, about eleven hundred. Now the Hi, other Viper. thing that I don't see over here, hey Viper, is okay. You got the little scooter, those scooters. Um, I don't see it here. I saw it when I was I'll bring up pictures. I, I saw them, but I didn't, I didn't pull it up, and I totally forgot about it. They the have the board. Uh, well, uh, also there's the seg the Segway, right? Yeah, and they got the different. Uh, get out of here, you friggin' ad! Uh, how do you? I don't want that. There we go. But then um, the Segways and stuff. But then there was a. One sort of like this that was a instead of uh, this has a big this one here has a big fat one on it, but there was a uh, let's see, does it have it up here at the top? I think no. some cities in Japan and 
the West Coast have them out for people that are electric. Yeah. They're doing trial runs. So you, you pick one up, you ride it, and you leave it at the next charge station for the next person. Yeah. But there was one I saw. Uh, okay, we're getting closer here with the, uh, the tortoise one here. But it was four wheels, and right. it was a froze again. I ah, froze again. Okay, so yeah, so but I saw a four wheel one the guys in the military riding it with a little with a little trailer behind it. Yeah. Yep. But uh so like I said, you're gonna see a lot of these in the future. Yeah. Because they could park it like that little photo right there, the three of them. They could park it, recharge, and you yeah. put your credit card or bike card or scooter card yeah. and you ride off and you park it next time. Yeah. So yeah, there's a and there's an app for that. I know for your phone. Uh oh, weird. Electric scooters arrive in Idaho Falls. Oh my goodness! You got to be careful. You might see a bunch of terrorists on those things. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. I know a part of Idaho Falls that's going to be in. It's going to be in the old downtown area, where yeah, the order is twenty-five miles an hour. But yeah, so scooters are another another thing. Anything else out that I forgot? No side check. Anything else I forgot, guys? Right. Tell it to uh, Gil. There's one that Hedgehog Homestead does, but it's too complicated for most people on the panel yeah. or the chat. Oh, uh, that was something else I forgot to mention. Mainly because I have a pet peeve against uh, this. Anybody out there that rides motorcycles hates okay, scooters. Under, uh, uh, under, uh, understand. My dad used to ride big Harleys. My uncle used to ride big Harleys. My mom used to ride. I got pictures of my mom riding a Harley 65 up and down the Los, the cement, Los Angeles River. You know where they filmed the uh, Terminator driving down the river with the truck? She used to ride up and down there. She's a member of the uh, Glendale Motorcycle Club. Things have gotten too bad. Over 30 years ago, or actually 45 years ago, I stopped riding motorcycles. Because it was getting too dangerous out there. Hey, I'm on it. And uh, PT. Okay, show the link. The link to come up here. Is that the link you're talking about, Dave? I can't show you, but my pastor built the PTV. Oh, link. show. Oh wait, he put a link up there. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, where did uh, there it is? Okay. All right, so let me. Uh, I got to. Uh, dang it, I got to pull it up a different way here. Uh, Just a it's second. Gonna, it's going to take me a minute here to pull this up. So let me go in here. I got to do this the old-fashioned way to get to that link because I can't pull it out of Streamyard. Yeah, I can't pull it out of Streamyard. Let me go back up here and there we go. All right, yes. This is uh, the, the track stuff that his uh, pastor made, and he, uh, Dave's has shared some of the videos on this out in the snow. And some of them shows that you're know, riding around on it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's funny. Some show, show it moving, others when he's in the snow doesn't show him moving it. Oh, yeah. So there's another way of doing it. Right, and there's Hedgehog Farms. Now, Hedgehog hey, Farms. Hey, Hedgehog. The other thing about what Hedgehog did was he flew a Cessna. That's another way of transportation that nobody ever talks about it except for Hedgehog Farms. Yeah. Also, it's a great yeah. video, folks. Go check it out. Yeah. So what, what I started saying about why, uh, all right, it was starting to get too dangerous down in L.A. back in the early 70s to ride motorcycles as far as I was concerned. Uh, I had one cousin on a 35-mile-an-hour street get killed. I had another one get, uh, another cousin, uh, actually a nephew got uh, uh, sideswiped on a residential street, some idiot speeding down there. They don't care about people on motorcycles. Nope. 
All right. California or... and then California says, oh, motorcycles can split lanes on the freeway. Gee, let's get more, 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 more motorcyclists killed. <laughs> oh, God, I hate these guys in Southern Cal. Uh, that was Northern Cal that did this one. Oh, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, Northern Cal was the one that pushing all the motorcycle uh, clubs up there. <laughs> Look at Christy put. <laughs> I know. A John Deere with missiles. But you can use like lawnmowers. I've seen people convert lawnmowers to drive around places. I've seen people convert uh, roller tillers, like in the Far East. They use that to uh, power a little power wagon to drive down the road. It, you know, okay, it's me, just a. I'm going to bring this down and take up this up here. It's uh, just a roller tiller with a mo motor and for the back wagon, and they'll drive it down the street, which is kind of amazing. Unsafe because there's no brakes. Hang on, I'm getting something here funny for you. Okay, you want lawnmowers? There you go. Lawnmower drag races. These are an actual thing. Yep. Lawnmower drag races. I forgot they made a movie of some guy went from Ohio to his relative and he couldn't drive, so he didn't have a driver's license. So he converted his lawnmower and he drove a lawnmower on the side of the road to his uh, uh, relative's house. Yeah. It took him a while, but he got there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like I said, there's different. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you, you just got dimed out, Dustin. All right. Oh, uh, oh, oh Christy great. Wants, I can see, a, I can wants see to do it. either Christy or Prep for Husbands taking the roller tiller and let's make a drag strip out of it or a dragster out of it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, there are, you know, for, um, Trying to get back on topic here. In, anybody have any other ideas for either non-emergency or emergency and normal lifetime on, on the farm or whatever, or around the city or some other ways to get around other than using public transportation? And anything we've mentioned so far here with the bikes, the trikes, the farm equipment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, farm you equipment. Can I yeah. use a combine on the road? Oh, 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 oh. oh here you they drive them on the road all the time. But you live in Idaho. <laughs> yeah, um, and they should, in certain areas of the Central Valley, they just got to have a uh, a pilot car with them. Okay. Uh, gee, gee. You don't want to use it for getting groceries, folks. A little hard to park yeah. in the grocery store lot. Uh, Pat. Uh, oh, Kaylin says, "Don't forget water transportation." I I covered that in one video. You have to have a rubber boat or canoe or kayak. Okay, I'm going to see if I can find it here. So I'm going to Okay, so yeah, Bobcat does make an ATV, but what I'm looking for, ah, here it is. All right, this here is the Bobcat utility vehicle. It is not normal. It has a, um, the, the quick Bobcat change out on the front, you know, lift on the front so you can lift stuff up, you know, change out from bucket to forks, whatever. And on the back of it, it has a three-point hitch with a PTO. So you can put a rotor tiller on the back of it and rotor till with it. You can put a manure spreader on the back. There are uh, attachments. Attachment. See, you can put a brush hog on the front. And you take those off and you drive that drive drive to the grocery store. <laughs> the 65 uh. horsepower motor in that sucker. Yeah. Uh, remember the old banana split show? Mm -hmm. The yeah. Amphicat. Oh, 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 that's right. That's, I forgot to show that. Uh, While well, he types it up. Amphicat. It, yeah. That there covers what Caitlin said. That's water transportation, also land transportation. It does both. Now, I want to give you guys, anyone driving one of these, a piece of warning. Um, 
it is a belt drive, a V-belt drive system off the motor. And under the seat here where the per person driving sits is where the belt goes. And if you try, if you have one that doesn't want to start, you try pull starting it, warning, the belt's going to overspeed and break and hit whoever's sitting there right in the crack because it happened to my brother-in-law. My brother, my sister and brother-in-law had six of these. And they were pulling one down the street, trying to get it to start, and the belt and cut right through the seat and wiped his behind. Not fun, folks. Yeah. Now, they have them in six by six. They have them in eight by eight, and it's more just Amphicat. There are so they got them with just two seaters. They got them with four seaters. And I'm trying to find where's the and they got the the, the, uh, the track kits for them, for you, for you hunters. There was one, I'm trying to find it here, that was a three bench seat on it. Right. And at one time, you could put a small outboard motor to it so you could go bass fishing in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's the one with the, with, the, with the duallys on it. They actually have the ones with, with uh, uh, the kits for the duallys. So you get you get faster speed in the water. Yep. And then now, this is this is the one for the four in the swamps in the mud. Yeah. Now, folks, okay. there's another vehicle that we don't talk about because those little personal hovercrafts. Mm. Remember those? That was yeah. pretty during the banana split area, too. That you could go on sand and water and stuff next to life raft and stuff canoes and and things these were pretty popular yeah there's like this like the um the swamp boats with the uh, blade behind it and it also yeah. has the thing so yeah they have the they have the uh the single the personal ones and i'm not sure how many passenger ones they have we don't you know no, we're not getting one of those big bad boys no uh it's the small one for that yeah. one they have, they have small ones you can put two or three people in there I also can use it on snow too, folks. Oh yeah, you can use it on snow. You can use it on on grass. You can use it on water. You can use it. You know, sand yeah. has a, a big trouble with the sand ones. They have to be specially modified so the air intake doesn't screw up the engines. Right. But if you want to go from, they were talking about as big use for people going from. Uh, from uh, ships to uh, areas Ship. where they don't have a dock, and they can yeah. use this as a fast transport. And I think they had a six-man one or a three-man one for the military. But they updated. It's now like a that thing on the bottom next to the blue one. Uh, one with the machine guns on it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me see. It. Airboat. That uh, you know, our basic they they will come up on shore, but it's uh, they try to keep them in the water, right? It's not a good idea for land, it's mostly that type. It's a skiff used for the Florida Everglades. Other people, you probably get a foldable, like I said, life raft, yeah, type or a uh, kayak, and that will take care of any small water hazards or transportation routes like if you want to go downstream really quick yeah. uh, one of these things will work out yeah and then of course there's other type of boats and stuff too which we didn't even we didn't even touch about but you know other boats and stuff yeah, yeah. uh oh the duck boat yeah now you have to be careful with duck boats because this is 75 year old technology yeah and not too many of them are, are being built new and so if they don't maintain them right they could have accidents big time and there, there have been a few uh, duck boat accidents uh where they sort of just sank and killed everybody on board or uh, most you know a lot of people but yeah Yeah, so there's not really much oversight of duck boats, but if it's yeah. built new up to standards and they have the flotation vet tanks in them, it's safe. 
But yeah. if they skip on a few things, I wouldn't write in it. I'll write in a Cessna with Hedgehog Homestead. It's a lot safer. Bob says he lost his inflatable uh, riverboat. She popped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know so, what. Twin vested. I forget what those things are called. Um, Which the ones? That, the the, 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 the uh, military boats, you know, uh, inflatables that they they love to uh, uh, drive them up to the back of the Shikorskis and see. Uh, oh, see oh those, those are Zodiacs. Zodiacs, yeah. Yeah, but they have a either a plywood or a fiberglass base on it. It's not a true uh, inflatable. It's part inflatable. So they could yeah. get and zip it right up to the, the ramp. Those are expensive, the ones that the military made. Yeah. Because it has to withstand rifle fire. You don't want a rubber boat that sinks after you shoot it. It looks really bad for the SEALs. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a, that Zodiac is a personal one. That'll yeah. hold, I think, two people up to 300 pounds of cargo. So it was a, yeah, 300 pounds. Well, that's 3DL. Uh, yeah. So there, there, there are a bunch of, uh, yeah, there's a, you know, one here, you know, three people in it. Right. Three. That one has steerage and also an outboard motor on it. Yeah. So there are, um, There are there are things out there a lot there are a lot of choices uh, but you know but for the most part on not on water but on land even unless you're unless you're living down in the swamps or whatever you know you're going to be on land and you know there are a lot oh, Al froze there you go he's moving he froze for a second <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had that uh, Al's, Al, 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 Al's turn to play Disney <laughs> yeah it's the Elsa moment okay so. Um, yeah, I mean the way the price. You know, anybody notice the way prices of gas goes up, it goes down, uh, every which way. And sometimes it's just not worth it to drive to the store in your pickup or you know sedan or whatever else. Sometimes there's you know you got to figure out a different way to get around, ways to save money. Uh, Dustin, I'm gonna smack you. Uh, now I want a bacon sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I got chicken, so. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So I think we covered it. If anybody has any questions, you know, you can always email me either, you know, you know the email for, for uh, this channel's down in the bottom. You go to email me at Camp Patton Family Compound. Right. And I need to bring something. It's time. Let me bring up this other stuff over here. My mouse, get over there. Well, so, coming up doing that. tomorrow. Guys, special live stream tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern. It is eight years since I originally started the original Gray Man Prepping Channel. I didn't want me to say it. Back when I was working for DHS. So, um, yeah, so eight years ago I started Gray Man Prepping. Did it for about six months and... Got too busy at work and forgot about it and brought it back uh, several months ago. So we're going to be doing a, an eight-year anniversary on it, and we're going to be talking about gray water, dark gray water, and black water as well. So um, we'll have, have a little, little bit of information, and then we'll have party time, and I'll open it up if anybody wants to come up here and chit-chat like they do over on uh, Courtney's uh, after party. But we'll uh, set stuff up here, and we're talking the first, uh, ha first half of it. We'll talk about um, procedures for using gray water and dark gray and not using black water. No. And remember, folks, if you contact with black water, be very careful because you don't know what's in the black water. Yeah, poo. No, <laughs> pathogens. Yeah, Next exactly. Poo. Yeah. So you might get leprosy. You might get cholera. You might get dysentery. Dysentery killed a lot of people in the 1840s. It's and not only 1840s. In certain areas, it's still killing a lot of people today. Right. All right. Uh, then uh, Friday, coming up on Friday, 
We're gonna. Uh, it's gonna be communi communicating on the homestead. That's on Friday night on the homestead. We talk about ways to communicate out on the uh, everyday communications out on the homestead and non homesteads. You know, even if you have like a, an acre and a half or an acre or through half an acre or whatever, and your kids are running around the neighborhood, uh, ways to keep people in touch other than cell phones. And the other, th and then next Tuesday here on Tactical Tuesday, we're going to get into a touchy subject here called, are you active in your local government? <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. government, folks, not illegal government. Yeah, legal governments, and we're going to talk about uh, getting out there and uh, actually getting involved. All right, Christy, go to bed. See you later. Night, folks. All right, and so we're going to wrap this up. <coughs> wrap this up here. So tomorrow night, eight o'clock, same place here. I'll be putting out a uh, invitation email in the morning. Uh, email. Oh, video don't in the morning. forget you. You did that. Um, video today on oh. uh, hiding stuff. Yes, uh, I did that video earlier, and I actually found out I got to come up with a part two because I ran. I, I was running so long on it, I just left a bunch of stuff off it. So I'm going right. to do a part two. Talk about and other also things. you made a few mistakes, folks. If you bury things, make sure it's on your property. Do yeah, not I, do I did. like that one survivalist. We yeah. all know that buried on BLM land and. National Forest Land, he's doing 20 years. He buried you know what out there that you're not supposed to bury out there. Pew pew ammunition. Yeah. And when they exploded because of the uh, Gil Froze, okay, uh, fire. F a forest fire, a lot of people were really upset, especially the Forest Service, when they're trying to put out the fire when you hear, what the hell was that? <laughs> yeah. All righty, folks. Uh, yeah, so I, I had the one today. There'll be another video coming out tomorrow from Camp Patton Family Compound, a follow-up on the garden tour, because everybody said it was time to pull the daikon radishes, so I videoed that today, so that'll be coming out tomorrow. Right. Also, I want to make one clear point. Stop making bees fertilize corn. I've seen 20 videos of people, urban gardeners, Bees fertilize corn. I'm looking at them like, what are these people smoking? Because Gil and I know corn don't fertilize like that. Bees don't have nothing to do with corn. <laughs> no, what I got here I'm drinking out of is my water bottle. Water bottle. Right. So no more bees and corn videos, folks. Yeah. Corn, it drops on the tassels. That's how you get yeah. or wind cross pollination. Yeah. And that's bees how are, you get, get cross pollination from one field to the next field. When a big, strong wind comes in, you got two different types of corn. Now you got hybrids. Right. And the bee, the pollen's bigger than the bee. And the bee's like, I'm going to have a heart attack if I have to carry this to the tassel. Yeah. Alrighty, folks, we're going to wrap it up here now. Uh, thank you all for coming in. Night, folks. And I froze again. And if yep. you think anybody would be interested in the information we shared tonight, please share it out to them. You can always just take the URL up there and just email it to them. Alrighty, so we'll see you uh, tomorrow night at 10 Eastern. So in the meantime, stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, and look out for stupid people.